Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are at the city of Lublin. We will meet with Mr. Martin Delbaut, a Dutchman that moved to Lublin, fell in love with the city, and now worked as a tour guide showing the world Lublin's most crown jewels. We are standing here inside the Lublin Castle Museum, and I was wondering, before it became a museum, what purpose did the castle serve? Oh, that is a very good question, because the history of this place dates back for, for ages and ages. You know, in the 1200s, you had here a castle with the keep. The keep is um, built around that time. Right. Uh, but uh, this place has not always been a museum, mm -hmm. and actually we are not standing in the castle. Right. Everybody is used to calling it a castle. Yeah. Uh, in Polish, the Zamek, you know, everybody, yeah. it's a castle, but it isn't. We are actually standing in a prison. A prison. former prison, yes. Right. Um, the castle um, became in decline during the ages. Um, the condition became poorer and poorer. Mm -hmm. Everything was literally affected. So um, the Holy Trinity Chapel was in a poor condition, mm -hmm. the, the, the structure of the castle itself. Mm -hmm. And they actually decided to destroy the castle. It were the Russians. Right. Between 1823 and 1826, they simply knocked down the castle. They only kept uh, Don John the Keep. Mm -hmm. and the Holy Trinity Chapel, and the whole other structure was simply knocked down right. and integrated by purpose and prison. Mm -hmm. And actually, um, you now we have a beautiful painting behind us. Mm -hmm. On the painting you see a view of Lublin, a panorama, and you can see the castle on it, mm -hmm. uh, and also the castle already in its current state. Right. Uh, the thing about the prison is, is that it was actually a very sad place. Of course because uh, it was heavily used by uh, the Nazis during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. um, we have here in town Majdanek, mm -hmm. uh, Nazi concentration camp, the right. former Nazi concentration mm -hmm. camp. Um, mainly Jewish people were held there and were murdered there, mm -hmm. and the Nazis used this place for the resistance fighters. Right. So, um, literally, people were imprisoned here, they were tortured here, um, all that kind of stuff, and mm -hmm. many people were killed here. It had right. a tremendously high killing rate. Mm -hmm. To give you a horrible example, on the last day before the liberation in 44, they shot 300 people here in the workshops at the time in the prison. Literally cold blooded, they came mm -hmm. in with their machine guns, and the people were mown down. Mm. What I personally don't like the most about the prison is that um, it kept a prison between 44, the liberation, right. and 54. Mm -hmm. And it was in use by um, the secret communistic police. Mm -hmm. And 333 people lost here their life mm -hmm. because they had anti-communistic views. Mm. So that makes it even more sad up to me that the, the killing didn't stop. Right, right, like the mere disagreement in political ideology might end up with uh, imprisonment and death. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, there was no freedom of speech at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then something changed. Mm -hmm. In 1954, mm -hmm. they wanted to celebrate uh, the 10th University of the People's Republic of Poland. Sure because um, they had a very good reason to pick Lublin, mm -hmm. a significant reason, because Lublin became the capital of Poland just after the liberation. Right. So that, now we switch to something positive. Mm -hmm. We were for a short time, but anyway, <laughs> we have been twice in our history the capital of Poland, right. after the First World War mm -hmm. and after the Second one. Mm -hmm. And the peoples uh, of, yeah, the political party, let's say it in this way, wanted mm -hmm. to celebrate um, their anniversary, so they decided to built a museum here in the castle, mm -hmm. but also they beautifully restored our historical center. Mm -hmm. Because we have an, um, a Renaissance center here in Lublin, mm -hmm. uh, the old town. Mm -hmm. And after the Second World War, many buildings were simply yeah, damaged by the war. Nothing was done with it. And they decided, okay, let's restore it. And in this way, you know, you can literally see the beauty of Lublin in the old town as it was in the past. The Lublin Castle was turned into a prison by the Russian Empire in 1831 and retained this function until 1954. 
In the years following the end of the Second World War, around 30,000 Polish opponents to the Soviet Union's occupation of Poland were imprisoned here at one point or another. Next up, we will talk to Mr. Dalebout about the role Lublin played in the Polish anti-communist movement. So you're just telling me that this structure served as a prison for the Russian empires, later on the Nazis, and again the Soviet Union. And, but I also know that Lublin has a significant place in the anti-communist movement, and yeah. I was wondering if you can tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, no, definitely spot on. Um, yeah, a world-famous person, mm -hmm. John Paul II. He was teaching here in Lublin mm -hmm. at the Catholic University. Right. And this was literally the only university in Poland which was independent. Mm -hmm. So on, in other cities, for example, take the capital Warsaw, mm -hmm. right. if you went to university, they were teaching Marxism, mm -hmm. the doctrine of Marxism. Mm -hmm. Here, this was not the case. It was mm -hmm. literally independent and I could speak freely. Mm -hmm. And of course, John Paul II had an extremely strong voice against communism mm -hmm. in in Poland mm -hmm. and actually behind the curtain. Right. What he was doing out of the Vatican was literally broadcasting the message of hope, mm -hmm. the message of that we could get change in this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. um, that was he providing. And he was, he has been here in Lublin, mm -hmm. as for example, um, at the Arts Cathedral, a beautiful monument mm -hmm. uh, remembering his visit mm -hmm. to Lublin. And he was mentioning Lublin um, um, on multiple occasions. For example, if you go to the Arts Cathedral, we have there the painting of the crying Madonna, mm -hmm. and it is part of the Maria cult. And it was also stated by the Pope that it is part of the Maria cult. So definitely Lublin had a warm place in the heart of the Pope. Uh, mm -hmm. A spot for Lublin was reserved in his heart. I I do notice that there is a lot of church influence in around Lublin, and I saw a lot of churches on my way here built in the Renaissance style. Not just churches, but the structure in a whole. And can you tell me a little bit about the influence? Yeah, it is all related to pancakes. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a great fire here in uh, 1575. That was the first great fire, mm -hmm. and this all it has all to do with Jadwiga. Okay. Jadwiga was um, a simple lady living here in town, mm -hmm. and she was greedy. And Jadwiga had decided that uh, during a trade fair that she wanted to sell off pancakes. Mm -hmm. And in her humble opinion, she had the best recipe in town. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And mix that with the greediness of her, she started to bake um, piles of pancakes, mm -hmm. the more the better. Right. And she couldn't stop. So during the night, she kept on frying pancakes. Mm -hmm. And Fatike kicked in, of course. Mm -hmm. She fell to sleep and the fire, her fire where she was baking on, sprung out of control mm -hmm. and literally whole Lublin burned down. Mm -hmm. So the beautiful buildings you see here in town, mm -hmm. like the Kroska Gate, um, the Dominican Monastery, the buildings on the market on the Rynik, mm -hmm. they were all touched by that fire. Literally no building was untouched. Mm -hmm. And this was actually a blessing for Lublin. So actually we need to erect a monument for Jadwiga mm -hmm. <laughs> because as a phoenix, mm -hmm. Lublin raised out of its ashes mm -hmm. and it was re rebuilt in this beautiful Renaissance style. And then a quirky thing, mm -hmm. if you dig into the archives and you sure. want to figure out, you know, from who was now that architect and who was building this, mm -hmm. maybe a bit boring, but some people love to do it, mm -hmm. you will come across many Italian names. Italian that, names? Yeah, Italian names, because the main architects were Italians. Mm -hmm. And that is so cool, you know. Nowadays, Polish people go often abroad to work, but at that time we were so rich that mm -hmm. people from abroad came to Poland to work. Ah. And they sticked in Lublin and they sticked in Poland. They really loved the, uh, the Polish ladies. Mm -hmm. They married. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have so many Italian architects and Italian names All right. in Lublin. As we can see, Lublin is one of the oldest cities filled with historical monuments. But the beating heart of the city, the Lublin Castle, is right behind me. The castle was a prison for over a century when Poland was under occupation. But today, it serves a positive purpose of being the city's main museum. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History.